Uh, good morning. Uh, like I said, my name is uh, Carl Hansel. I'm the Health and Safety Coordinator for the School of Medicine. And I'm just going to give you a brief overview of some of the health and safety issues uh, that you may uh, uh, come into contact with uh, during your time studying here at uh, Cardiff. Okay, uh, you've seen a few maps. Uh, this is the one I could find. And this is where we uh, currently are. Uh, as you can see, the site is uh, rather large and there's a number of out outlying buildings. Uh, I'm sure you'll be uh, familiar with some of these if you've already had a tour of the place. Uh, but there are a number of outlying buildings, for example, the Tenvis building, WHRI, and so on. Uh, you could be based in any, any one of those or maybe multiple sites. Uh, but ultimately, the, the same health and safety legislation and uh, school uh, policies apply throughout. Okay, so the, the aims and objectives of the School of Medicine are to uh, sustain and maintain the university's uh, responsibilities. Okay, so we uh, need to maintain the adhere to the duties of staff in terms of health and safety, uh, ensure that your uh, safety is maintained. Uh, we need to uh, abide by the uh, university incident reporting procedure and also to follow all the, the university policies and pr procedures therein. Uh, the Occupational Safety, Health and Environment units are based, uh, again, downtown at 47 Park Place, and these are some of the key contacts. Uh, again, we do, I don't expect you to remember all these. These will be available on the website also. Uh, but uh, the, um, Sir Andy Berry, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Andy Berry, that's a mistake there, is the current director of OSHU, and those are some of the key contacts. Okay, so getting down to the uh, business. If you see a fire or detect a fire or hear a continuous fire alarm sounding anywhere in your department, please raise, raise the alarm or at least inform a member of staff. Now the number, if, if you can take anything away from what I say today, just remember uh, all the threes. So the four threes, if you call that number, uh, if you see a fire or an emergency, or you can break the glass, that, that's the key number to ring. So if you forget everything I've said today, just remember all the threes. Okay. And each of the, the buildings has its own uh, assembly point. So uh, if you, in this case, you would vacate to the medical school entrance, but obviously it depends on where you are in the buildings. Uh, you'd be able to see, uh, anywhere you see a fire, uh, uh, fire extinguisher, you'll see the detail of where you need to evacuate to. And again, it doesn't just apply to fire, it could be anything. If, if, if someone's had a, if you've seen someone that's uh, in a, a, a serious fall, for example, or, or, or a crime, uh, then please, you can phone that number and report it and things will get uh, dealt with. Okay, here's the, uh, the universal responsibilities are to abide by the Health and Safety at Work Act. Of 1974, and those are just an example of some of those uh, uh, some of the legislation within. There's about 40 or 50 of, of individual pieces of legislation, but those are the key ones. The ones we're going to focus on today are mainly the uh, control of substances as it does the health, the cost regs, and the management of health and safety at, at work regulations. Okay, so why do we need to uh, you know abide by them? Well, essentially the um, it allows us to carry on with work. Um, the health and safety executive can, if they, if, they, if they wish to, serve improvement notices. They can visit the site any time, any particular laboratory area, any particular office space, and come in and just have a quick inspection. If they see things that are amiss in any way, you haven't got policies in place, there's no risk assessments, for example, or there's things that look particularly dangerous, they can either issue an improvement notice, which basically says they give you a three-month or a six-month period in order to, to uh, pick up your game. If that doesn't work, if it's, if it's so serious that they can serve a prohibition notice and they can stop work immediately. So this doesn't, you know, doesn't look very good on the university, but particularly doesn't work good uh, for your uh, continuing studies. So we want to try and maintain that. And because we've got good systems in place, uh, we, 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 well, we haven't had a prosecution yet, uh, but those, those type of prosecutions could be a fine or even impris imprisonment. Not to scare you or anything, but... Um, it usually goes up the chain, so the dean would be in court rather than yourselves. But so we want to try and keep them out of court, so that's why we keep to, uh, maintaining the safety as best we can. Okay, so uh, if you have an incident, I mean anything from a cut finger right way to a broken leg, etc., or, or some exposure to some chemical in the laboratory area, then you need to report it. Okay, so uh, tell a member of staff, your supervisor, or a local safety representative, and you, you can fill in an online form. Uh, so we, we take so everything, even including near misses, and the importance of this is so that we can we can learn lessons from them. So if someone has uh, uh, you know an injury occurred to them, it may be something that's been you know uh, like a 
the carpet tile has been loose and hasn't been reported and that keeps happening and happening over and over again, then we can do something about it and we can, we can improve the situation. So please report any incidents you can to your supervisor. Um, that's just a uh, screenshot of the uh, OSHU website. There's a lot of detail on there if you wish to uh, get any information in terms of assistance with risk assessments, have a look at the policies on uh, personal protective equipment, you name it, it's available on there. And again, so please log into that if you require any further assistance. Okay, um, going back to some of the reg regulations now, the, the duties of employees and supervisors to ensure that all of your tasks are risk assessed. Uh, now, again, before you, when you go into your areas, please ask your supervisor before you start any work, can you have a look at the risk assessments for a particular task? If there's none in place, or if it's a new task, please make sure that you work with your supervisor uh, to actually produce one. It will assist in your, uh, your work because you know then it's going to be run as smoothly and as, as effectively as it can, and also it will uh, reduce the level of exposure that you're likely to face. Okay, so some of the hazards, uh, the well, broad hazard categories that you may come in uh, contact with are physical, uh, electrical, radiation, and so on. Students are there because uh, it implies that you may not have as much experience of working in this particular area. Um, it's implied that you've worked in other institutions, uh, but obviously you're new to this place, so you become a hazard in itself. So that's why it's so important to undertake uh, risk assessments. And how we do this, basically the risk matrix, which I'm sure you might be familiar with, uh, and risk is basically uh, uh, multiplying the uh, likelihood with the severity. So if you have an almost certain likelihood combined with a fatality, then those type of activities we can try to minimise if we can. Okay? So if you have a situation where something may be likely and you, like, and you could have a three-day injury, well, maybe we want to bring that down if we can using control measures. So that's, we, that's what the risk assessment is all about, controlling the level of risk. Okay, so Cars, as I said, the control of substances as the health. Uh, it's our duty as the employer to prevent exposure uh, of staff and students, of course, to uh, substances hazardous to health. Uh, if we can't prevent the exposure, then we attempt to adequate, uh, adequately uh, control it. Okay, as I said before, uh, it's important to risk assess, uh, to prevent and or control exposure, and we use particular control measures. Uh, provide to maintain, examine uh, and test those control measures. So that could be anything from a, a local exhaust ventilation, fume cabinet if you will, shields if you're working with radiation and so on. And also to provide the necessary health surveillance uh, where appropriate and obviously inf you know, adequate information and training. Okay, so you, you may be familiar with these. These are microbiological uh, safety cabinets in various areas and you may uh, be using these uh, doing your work here. Obviously, before you start working uh, on these, then you should have a local uh, building uh, induction and all, then also um, health and safety induction directly related to the biological uh, safety. So before you start any work, as I said, please contact your local safety representative. I can, have, I can give you that information or ask the, the building manager or the institute manager uh, if you can have the details and then they will run through all the local inductions which should be in place for your areas. Uh, that's some uh, guidance on biological safety in particular. Again, I'm not going to go through all, all of this, but it should be available on the website if you require it. Um, this now, uh, uh, the Human Tissue Act, uh, which came into effect in the, uh, 2006, uh, regulates the removal, storage and use and disposal of, of relevant material. And in this case, it could be anything from a cell uh, to, to, to an organ, so that could be skin, uh, teeth, whatever you could be working with. So you may uh, be using, working with human tissue. So the important thing is that you, uh, if you are going to be working with this, discuss it with your supervisor and then also get in touch with your person designated for your institute. Now you may not be able to know this, but again, just ask your supervisor and I'm sure they'll be able to uh, direct you in their direction. So that will uh, enable you to work safely and correctly with human tissue. Uh, and HJ does not uh, define storage, but it's the possession of any human tissue for research is regarded as storage. So it could be, it could be anything. So anything in any fr fridges or freezers that you may have or, or, or storage in any area, that has to be regulated by the Human Tissue uh, Association. Okay, uh, just getting back to some of the detail now. Um, 
liquid nitrogen. You might have worked with this in, in the past, but the important thing, the main, the key thing is, is to not uh, carry large vessels in lifts. We have mechanisms in place where technical staff or, or, or some uh, PhDs currently, uh, they have a way of collecting the nitrogen and, then and knocking off the, the, uh, the lift so it can actually just be directed to the particular floor so you don't have to accompany any of that. Uh, because uh, we, there was an event, uh, I believe, in Edinburgh University uh, where someone, uh, there was a fatality related to this when there was a spill in the lift. So that's why uh, we don't actually accompany uh, liquid nitrogen because of the asphyxiation properties. And again, so when you bring it to your area, please make sure that the, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, there's enough ventilation in the space and also use the appropriate uh, PPE that should be provided for you. Uh, your work may involve uh, using ionising radiation. Uh, the key contacts there are Dr. Mike Sabansky uh, in, in Austria, and that's his contact detail. Um, be but before you actually carry out any radiation work, please contact your local radiation protection supervisor. And these should, there are one or two within a, a each building uh, and a number within each institute. So again, before you do that, they also carry out courses. There's one uh, due to run, I believe, uh, at the end of uh, October, which allow you to work safely with um, radiation sources. And also, uh, there are the genetically modified organisms uh, regulations. Again, you may be working with genetically modified or organisms. And again, they run safety co specific safety courses uh, via OSHU for that. So if you are going to be working with that, please ask your supervisor. I'm going to be working with these particular um, uh, well, organisms or substances. Please can I go on the course? And there's usually plenty of availability. So uh, please check with your supervisors on that. Okay, if you are going to be working out of hours in your particular areas, uh, the important thing is, is to uh, log in, and that's the process. So uh, out of hours are deemed between 7 uh, p.m. and 7 a.m., weekends or uh, during bank holidays. Uh, you need to check with either your head of department or your supervisor if this is okay to do this. And you, and you do this by uh, calling uh, 46600 to log in. You give your details and then they know you're, you're in the building and then you can carry on with your work. And then if for any reason you don't actually uh, contact them to log out, they, then security can come and check your, that, they, that you're okay. So that's an important mechanism. A lot of people don't adhere to this, but this is really important because it's, it, has, it has helped a few people in the past. So it's important if you uh, can stick to the loan worker uh, policy. Okay, um, make sure when you get to your areas, check your notice boards. This should be uh, laid out in your local inductions. But please make sure you find out who your local first aider is uh, for, for the building. If, for, if it's a, you know, a, a worse injury, it's unlikely to be, but uh, if it is, then you can go straight to A&E. We're lucky we've got an A&E department just on our doorstep here. Uh, that's the number. And again, you can use all the threes if you require an ambulance. It's the fact that all three is, uh, is our 999, if you will. 999 will also work, but we like to use the, the, all the threes because then it's gated through, uh, through our security and through uh, switchboards, so then the, the necessary authorities can be alerted. Okay, get, uh, you're probably familiar with these type of safety signs. Uh, we've got uh, the yellow and black sign, which is a warning symbol. You've also got the prohibition, which you things you can't do in the areas. You've also got safe conditions, for example, the, uh, uh, the green and black signs telling you where the fire exits are. And also the things you have to do, so in, in this case, uh, wearing ear protection. Uh, waste segregation, again, uh, on the, uh, the, within the main building, there's actually an, an additional waste stream which uh, uses orange bag waste, which is biological uh, uh, waste specifically. But mainly, in the outlying buildings currently, you'll see uh, yellow uh, clinical uh, bags and non-clinical black bags. Now, things that you, you more than likely to see these in all laboratory areas, the yellow, uh, please make sure that anything that's either contaminated with chemicals, uh, you know, gloves, for example, or paper towels, they go into the yellow bag waste stream. And if it's a sharp, uh, if you're working with uh, scalpel blades or needles or anything that's or a very small broken beaker, beaker for example, that's contaminated with um, chemicals, please uh, make sure they go into sharp spins. These should all be labelled um, uh, by the person that's assembled them and then also signed off to say they've actually been checked and closed properly. Okay. Uh, Within the School of Medicine, we have a uh, portable applying testing regime in place, which is undertaken annually for all laboratory areas and every three years for all office areas. But before you actually uh, 
uh, undertake any any work, please just give a uh, give them once over. Just, just check that there's no damage to the equipment and the connect connecting leads. Um, make sure that the you know the sheath sheath of the plugs are correct. And the main thing is to report all uh, falsely safety coordinator or your, or your supervisor. If you see something that looks a bit awry, please report it, and we can do something about it. And I've just mentioned the uh, path testing program. Okay, health surveillance uh, within occupational health. Now, occupational health, again, for uh, all, all students and staff is based uh, at 47 Park, Park Place. There are some uh, local administration changes. That's about to change soon. There may be a third party coming in to uh, provide that service. But uh, until that happens, if you require um, hepatitis B uh, jabs, they can be arranged through occupational health. If, if you're working with any uh, blood or if, uh, any exposure to dander. We also like to, you to have a baseline spirometry reading. If you are going to be working in a lab that's going to uh, expose you to uh, various chemicals or if you're going to be uh, exposed to any sort of dander or anything of that nature, then we, we need to have a lung function test if you haven't had one done already. Again, this can be arranged locally. Please speak to your supervisor and they will contact your uh, local safety representative. Um, there's many routes, uh, uh, as you can imagine, to exposure to various chemicals. And also, if uh, you happen to be pregnant, or if, if you're aware of that, please not notify, um, again, obviously confidentially, either your supervisor or mentor, uh, and then let occupational health know, because then uh, it, it opens up a raft of, of different re regulations that we need to risk assess you within your working environment. So then we may need to preclude you from working in certain like, radiation areas, for example, or in uh, tissue culture environments, but that's, uh, but that's only something if that uh, does happen to you. <coughs> okay, uh, so importantly, uh, instruction, training and supervision. We must provide adequate information and training uh, to you and supervision, especially uh, when you're first starting out uh, in the laboratory area. Um, the induction training is coordinated locally. Uh, so other than this, this is part of the training, but this is just a brief overview. But when you do go to your areas, you will, have a, uh, you will uh, go through, uh, you will have a tour of the department, which should see whether all the fire exits are, uh, what equipment to use, and then we'll, you'll have specialty, specialty training for the use of centrifuges, for example, and, very, and HPLC machines and, and so on. So make sure you get that. If you don't get that, and, and if you don't want to approach your supervisor, because if they haven't uh, felt the need to show you, then please either talk to your mentor or someone and they will make sure that you get that information because that's critical, okay? Okay, so your role with health and safety within the university is register with occupational health if you haven't done so already, um, get the appropriate training and risk assess significant hazards, you can talk to your supervisor about that, follow all the procedures and policies, Report any incidents and near misses. Rep uh, report any faulty or damaged equipment. Use any equipment properly and check them if necessary. And use personal protective equipment when necessary. And remember, health and safety is everyone's responsibility. So don't forget, we have an operations team in place made up of core technicians and facility management, including myself. If you have any issues, uh, talk to them. Uh, they will become known to you or talk to the uh, receptionists in all areas and we can get something done. If you have any health and safety queries or concerns, uh, it's, it's myself um, and there's, there's my number. And we also have institute safety officers uh, based in, at all institutes and they can help you. But, for the, uh, but uh, if you just want to contact myself, and again, OSHU, if I'm not available, uh, contact OSHU directly if you've got any concerns and there's the health centre number. All this information should be available on the website, so please check it out if you need any further information. Okay. Thank you, that's it. Thanks, Carl.